Hi. I got every achievement in Evil West on its hardest difficulty, Evil Mode. And let me tell you this, this was quite the challenge. I- I dodged and tested- Oh my god! Every ounce of my patience. No! My wits. Just, it, they're everywhere. They're fucking everywhere. And my ability to spam the left trigger button. Harry God. This game takes place in present-day America, where the guns are heavy, murder is admissible, and the people have transformed into... Uh... Vampires, Batman, leeches, furries, big guinea pigs, hentai, big brutes, more hentai, random guys who throw balls all over the floor, suicide bombers, and of course, more hentai. So basically, um, welcome to Ohio. The main objective of this game is to kill a child who wants to raise an army against the main character. Johnny Sins and his special gauntlet that lets him zip around. Oh my god, what the fuck is going on? And use electricity as a weapon. To get all the achievements, however, we have to do more than just beat this child. We have to get every single weapon upgrade. We have to grab all the collectibles. We have to complete all the combat-related achievements. We have to kill the bosses in specific ways. And we have to do this all on the hardest difficulty. All for the sake of... What? 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 Oh my god, that didn't even... No! Oh my... What? I died... Are you joking? Ah! Okay. I fucking dodged! Sacrificing my vocal cords. Hello, do you not see me, game? Shooting the weak point! Evil mode makes it so that enemies take much longer to kill and kill me in two shots. What? And the more I progress, the more damage they do. What? One hit? And the less damage they take. So eventually... Oh my, he just, he one-shots me. He one-shots me! I get one-shotted. Oh my god! And each encounter takes 20 to 30 minutes of continuous combat in order to bypass. The best part is that if we die during any of it, THANK YOU! We have to start the whole sequence again. Oh! Ah! And as you can imagine, that's why I love this game. I love this game so much. <laughs> this led to me expressing my jubilant, I love this fucking game, and jovial opinion on this game's amazing mechanics. This game is so shit! So how about subscribing and making my suffering worth it? Thank you. Now for my first playthrough, I was playing this game relatively blind. But during the process, I learned a lot about the game's mechanics, monsters, and got a few achievements along the way. Firstly, on Chapter 1, I learned how to skimmy along a wall and Indiana Jones my way across ledges. But most importantly, I learned how to deal with the first few enemies in the game, which is to use... Domestic violence. Most importantly, hero punches, cannonballing, finishers, and repetitive jugular shots. For cannonballing 50 enemies, I get the achievement Monster Ball, and for performing 15 finishers, I get the achievement Pointless Violence. We also get a revolver this chapter, which I didn't use so that I can grab the achievement Mighty Mitten for killing 10 enemies with the gauntlet after acquiring the revolver. However, this revolver is quite useful. Every enemy's weakness, a Glock! since it can unleash a load of bullets in mere seconds, and later on can be electrically augmented to hit multiple enemies at once. Now continuing on to Chapter 2, we immediately get the rifle, which we can use to scope down the enemies and hit their weak points. After hitting 45 weak points, we get the achievement in the fields. Now our enemies for this chapter were human beings with amazing accuracy. 
flying insects that can be one-shotted, and all the same enemies from Chapter 1. Other than that, I leveled up and fought the boss. Batman, who has the capability to nearly one-shot me. Oh my god, that is so much damage! He's also really good at jumping, but he's not so good at dodging the bullets coming at him for five minutes straight. Got him! In Chapter 3, I got ahead of the game. Get it? And learned to spam my left trigger button in order to parry the enemies into electrotherapy. This is also known as the E combo, which allows us to temporarily stun the enemies and punch the shit out of them. We can also use this E combo to drag our enemies to us and teleport ourselves across the map. What the hell was- how did I do that? In this chapter, we also get the ability to use these energy bars, which for right now, allows us to send shockwaves to the floor and can be built up by killing enemies using the E combo. For using 15 energy bars, we get the achievement Chewing Vaults, and for killing 20 enemies with the E combo, we get the achievement E Rodeo. We also got two new enemies this chapter, the Ball Throwers and the Skinless Vampires. The ball throwers, um, how do I put this? Throw balls. And the skinless vampires are just more aggressive versions of the regular enemies. Oh, and one last thing. I'm going supersonic! Ah! In chapter four, I acquired the boomstick, which is my favorite weapon, since it instantly takes out a chunk of health from the enemy and it replenishes quite quickly. We can use the boomstick on the upcoming mini-boss, Big Leech Dude, whose most annoying attack are causing shockwaves on the ground, charging at me continuously, unparryable attacks, and the ability to regenerate his broken shield. We can lure him into TNT to break his shield and duke it out with him, but what works best is using the boomstick when he charges and shooting him through this crevice. After the fight, we have to survive the apocalypse and get the achievement Spark of Hope for activating the supercharge, giving us the ability to become the God of Thunder and evaporate our enemies. Oh my god, what the fuck is going on? Oh! Oh my god! I've become god! In Chapter 5, I got the achievement Calico for entering Calico Town and met a woman with the strongest jawline I've seen in my entire life. We also got to fight more human beings this chapter, which meant getting gunned down like a school zone and desperately trying to shoot everyone before they shoot me. We also got to fight werewolves for the first time and a new mini-boss. The werewolves can buff each other with their howls and can easily get cannonballed off the edge. Just don't miss your punch, because if you do, they can nearly one-shot you. The mini-boss, on the other hand, is quite easy and spends most of the time underground, just like my Discord admins, and throws rocks at our character periodically. Just like my Discord admins, we can shoot his weak points to get him to stop throwing the rocks and kick him out of the ground when he starts excavating. We also got to face another Batman this chapter, except this time, oh my god, there's enemies in the arena, and I had to use my gauntlet and E combos to face him, I'm a god at this game, instead of just shooting him with my revolver, because he has the ability to regain health during the fight, and punching does more damage than shooting him. And while the task was arduous to learn, oh my god, oh my god, he just came out of nowhere, ah uh, shit, oh no! It just took a bit of pattern recognition. Got him. Yes! That's how you do it! And a little bit of my sanity. I dodged! Oh my god, what is wrong with this game? In Chapter 6, we get to meet my favorite Devil May Cry character. And let's just say... I am the storm that is approaching! Besides that, we grab the Crippling Rod, which cripples all of the enemies into having strokes and allows us to perform E-combos on them. During this chapter, I learned how to quickly kill enemies using the E-combo. Ha! Oh, yes! This is how you get good, chat! And had to fight yet another Batman. This one had exceptional health and had military backup in the form of ball throwers. If I get hit by- Oh my god! This fight alone took me nine minutes straight to complete and consisted of me trying to get rid of the enemies around the boss, shooting the ball throwers while not trying to get jumped. Are you joking me? 
I looked away for four seconds! And struggling to learn the Batman's movesets. During this battle, I learned the vital arts of cannonballing the enemy into the mini-boss. Ooh, I could shoot him at him? I didn't know I could do that. And how badly it hurts to get slammed by a humanoid bat. But after the nine minutes, I did eventually kill it. You should have been dead a long time ago. Kick. Thank God. Yes. Finally. In Chapter 7, we get to learn about Supercharge Mode again, shoot some tumors, and learn about the Suicide Bombers. And the best way to deal with these guys is to... Dodge. Dodge. Shoot. Dodge. Dodge. We also picked up the Scorcher. Did more E combos. Pop, 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 pop. Cannonballed more enemies into mini bosses. Got the upgrade to electrically augment our revolver. And then finally faced the boss of this area. Really big ass leech dude. This boss makes us look very tiny in the arena and consists of two tentacles and a head which we can't shoot till we take the arms out of the equation. Doing this, however, is quite the challenge. Bro, what is this fight? Since the boss has multiple phases, Oh God, chat! Oh my God! Whoop! Whoop! And as you can tell by the amount of damage we do, took fucking forever to kill. Our first objective is to get rid of the tentacle arms. To do this, we have to dodge their onslaught of attacks Bro, this is so annoying. And either shoot them with our boomstick when they get stuck on the ground, or use our rifle to shoot their weak spot. I missed that weak spot quite a lot. Now once we explode one of the tentacles, the main head lubes up the arena for later, and we have to fight the remaining tentacle. Once we explode this tentacle, we can shoot the head's weak points for some major damage, and activate Phase 2. In Phase 2, we have to deal with rocks falling out of nowhere, and the live reenactment of ovulation. This ovulation summons suicide bombers on the lubed up dance floor, which can be stopped by shooting the egg sac before it explodes, or letting one of the tentacles ram itself into it. Once we finish killing the tentacles and shooting the weak spots again, we can now begin Phase 3. In Phase 3, the main head summons rocks all over the arena periodically and now performs ovulation on other parts of the arena. We can avoid the rocks by looking at the red indicators on the ground and prevent the ovulation of suicide bombers by zipping through the arena and taking down the egg sacs. The rest of the battle is me slowly taking away the tentacles with my rifle and boomstick till eventually... Come on! We're almost there! I kill the thing. Die! Yes! Yes! Did I do it? Yes! Woo! That was so long for killing the... leech thing. We get the achievement, Ticks and Leeches, and get the achievement, Minor Deity, for doing it on evil mode. Now for chapter 8, I get down and dirty with... My father. Kill more furries. Burn! Burn! Yeah! And grab a new weapon. Oh, cross bro. This one has a lot more ammo than the rifle, but does less damage as compensation. It's useful at hitting weak spots since my aim is... Questionable to say the least. And with the more ammo, can mitigate the sheer lack of FPS's I've played. At this point in the run, the game is starting to get more difficult. Uh, with more random assortment of enemies. This man's goofy. Ah! And now the combination of past mini-bosses during a single encounter. This does get worse in later chapters, but for right now, it's manageable. Supercharge! Alongside the increased difficulty, we also get to fight two new mini-bosses, Egg Dude and Spider Boy. The former is the most difficult mini-boss this game has to offer, especially on evil mode. I love this fucking game, where all of our attacks do the no damage. This boss requires us to shoot his floating egg before we have to shoot his weak spot before we can actually do damage. And to make it worse, while he has his egg activated, other enemies are protected with a golden coating. They're connected to the eggs! Holy shit! which will harm us if we do damage to them. This means 
no matter what, I'm dodging! We have to kill the egg guy first before we kill any other enemy in the arena. Really? This will definitely... Why are you not dead? ...not become a problem later on. Bro, I am trying to shoot! And will 100%... I shot him up! not cause me to hate this game is so shit choosing this difficulty yeah i love this game i love this game the reason this mechanic is fuck you amazing is because of my already amazing shooting skills that hit 100 percent of the time and are now being co-tested with my ability to dodge the mini bosses attack and every other attack that is surrounding my character to put it simply I fucking love this boss, and all of its mechanics. The worst part isn't even my aim or dodging skills, it's the fact that we have to go through four entire cycles of this before I can actually do enough damage to kill the boss. Thank God! So respectfully, expect me to be using any method possible, <coughs> aim assist, to beat this boss in as quick of a manner as physically possible. And uh, if you don't like that, maybe you can go and uh, fuck yourself. The Spider Boy is another mini boss this chapter that gives me mild annoyance. I, 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 uh, uh. He has the same ability as the Batman mini boss, except he can't heal himself in midair and instead likes to, uh, oh my God, he just, he just came. Release himself around the arena. I got came to death. To make this easier, we can use supercharge mode. Bang, 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 yes, yes. Or somehow glitch him to stand still and beat up his leg until he dies. Easy. <laughs> that was completely unintentional. In chapter nine, the game throws the same mini bosses at us that we fought in chapter eight. No, not again. And a little bit more. This chapter introduces the hentai mini-boss, which was hard to deal with at first since it persistently shoots me and flashbangs me and shoots its doom heads at me. Oh my god, it's literally doom. It's literally doom. After a bit of trial and error, oh my god, I found that all of its attacks, there we go, that's how we do it, have a weak point right at the center of its body, which when hit can allow it to be e-comboed. The best part is that shooting its weak points gives us healing stones. So if while I combo the hentai, I get hit by something in the process, I can just heal right back up when teleporting to him. The hentai also doesn't have that much health, and like the Eggman, has to be targeted early on since its laser beam attack is very persistent, and if anything, the other enemies in the arena I, I dodged are more difficult to deal with. Really? Are you really? Really? And with that, time to do it all over again. Welcome to chapter 10, where there's yet another annoying enemy Brother, to deal with. This guy stinks! There's more enemy spam, and we get to fight another hentai guy. Firstly, I got the achievement Sever Forever for shooting at enemy limbs a hundred times and severing them. The new enemy in this chapter is a cowboy guy who shoots his gun sometimes and can heal enemies randomly. Looks familiar, doesn't it? And while we're fighting these new enemies, we also get to fight a Batman and enemies that randomly throw maces at us. To make a long story short, the healing bastards are annoying and this battle took way too long. Kick, woo! Thank God! Later on in this chapter, we get to deal with more enemy spam. Oh, there's another guy. Oh my God! And Johnny Sins gets stuck in the floor. I cannot move. I am stuck in the floor. Help! I feel like I've seen this scene somewhere. Anyways, after this battle, we get to face the hentai boss, AKA the brooch. Now this guy makes me- I did not draw- I did not roll into you! A bit angry. And let's just say- No! I wasn't the biggest fan. Besides his normal melee attacks that we can block with our electricity, he can summon leech minions all over the arena. He can shoot this arrow thing at us. Ah! I'm alive! He can summon regular enemies. He can shoot another arrow thing at us. And he can summon waves of leeches. Ah! The leech minions can easily be taken care of by our electric revolver, 
The arrow things can easily be dodged when he summons them. The regular enemy summoning can be used as an opportunity to build our supercharge, which does a lot of damage to this boss. The other arrow thing can be prevented by shooting at the weak point. That is, if I can shoot it on time. No! And the waves of leeches can be dodged by finding the one area not over flooded with leeches. With this insight of being able to counter a majority of the boss's movesets and enough time on our hands, I activated Supercharge and... Come on! Come on! Yes! 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 Killing the boss gives us the achievement to adapt or die, and weren't you listening for doing it on evil mode? We also get the achievement bleed you out for not letting the brooch heal during the fight, which I did unintentionally, but I'll take it since, um, we, we don't have to do it later. Now welcome to chapter 11, 12, 13, and 14. Besides the location of these chapters, all of these chapters are the exact same. Fighting an onslaught of enemies, killing multiple mini-bosses at once, raging. Okay, I fucking dodged! What?! Oh my, I have to do it again! Bro, I am trying to shoot! Rinse and repeat. God damn it! During these chapters, I got two new items. The explosive bundles and the Gatling gun. The explosive bundles... Do explosives. And the Gatling gun... Is a Gatling gun. During each one of these chapters, there was a pivotal fight where we fought multiple mini-bosses at once. Sometimes there was two, and other times there was three. These mini-bosses are the exact same mini-bosses from other chapters, just mashed up in different orders. A majority of these fights- No! I- I did the attack and it didn't work! Made me scream. You guys can't out-dodge a fucking revolver. Just a little bit. This game is so shit! and die just a little bit more. But none of these compared to the abysmal fight in Chapter 14. Oh my god! Where I had to fight Eggman, three spider boys, and one of those barricade dudes. And to make matters worse, one of the spider boys shot webs in the arena continuously, slowing me down. I can't move! And every time you killed a mini-boss, FUCK YOU! Suicide bombers would flood the arena. Ah! Ah! You can say, THANK YOU! I was having, Oh my god! The time of my life. I fucking dodged! I dodged! I dodged! I dodged! During this entire encounter, I SHOT HIM! I was having an aiming problem. I SHOT! When shooting the Eggman's weak point. I SHOT YOU! Making me go, FUCK! A little insane. I shot it, man! It's literally, it's clearly showing me that I shot it! I was also getting this glitch where my character wouldn't zip forward. Go forward! Go forward! Like he would usually do. No! Oh! And as you can tell... Can you go forward? It doesn't do it! This was my breaking point before activating <coughs> aim assist. And let me say, <coughs> aim assist was quite useful since right after I activated it, all my problems seemed to resolve themselves almost instantly. Yes! Yes! In Chapter 14, there's also a multi-stage boss we have to do. This one is against our father, who just like the Parasiter, has three phases, each with slightly different attacks. The only difference is that in this fight, there's a checkpoint system between each one of the phases, meaning if we die in Phase 2, we also respawn back in Phase 2. Let me say, this made the fight a lot easier. Oh, I spawn here? Oh, thank God. Yes! Game, you did something right! You gave me a checkpoint! And made it so all I had to do was take out a third of the health bar before getting a checkpoint. William Rentier, aka our father, has a few different attacks. During first phase, he randomly tries to punch us, shoot us, and can do the slam down attack out of nowhere. We can counter all of these by dodging, blocking, or using our supercharge. Once we make it to phase two, his attacks evolve, and now he randomly tries to punch us, shoot us, and can do this slam down attack out of nowhere, which we can counter by dodging, blocking, or using our supercharge. 
and once we make it to phase three, his attacks evolve yet again. Instead, this time, he doesn't try to punch us. He sticks to just trying to shoot us and do the slam down attacks. The best counter was to pray to God when dodging and try to stun him as much as physically possible. And although I ended up dying quite a lot in the process, ah! he wasn't all that difficult, making patricide a lot easier to commit. I did it! I did it! Woo! For killing our father, we get the achievement Drop of Blood. And for doing it on evil difficulty, we get the achievement Then You Died. Continuing to chapter 15, we did the same thing we did in the past chapters. Killed way too many enemies, fought way too many mini-bosses, and tried our best to survive it all before we reached the final chapter, chapter 16. But before we go on to chapter 16, I went to go grab all the collectibles using chapter select. This meant going through practically the entire game all over again and grabbing all the missing chest and random bags of cash laying around while also going through every enemy encounter we went through already. And only after going through all of the chapters again, I got the achievement Chestnuts and Field Agent for finding all the hidden perks. I also got the achievement Slam the Fam during the chapter selects for slamming down 100 enemies with electricity. Now that the collectibles have been gathered, Welcome to chapter 16, the worst chapter. I can't move! I can't move! This game has to offer. In this chapter, we get to experience enemy spam like never seen before. More mini bosses than I can even count. And the conclusion to a 30 hour playthrough where I murder a fucking child. I killed the child, chat! Woo! To start this chapter off, we have to kill a small number of enemies, including four barricade men and three Batmans at the same time. No! What? And let me tell you three things. Oh yeah, we have to start from the start. <laughs> Supercharge and bullets are my only friends. Taking damage means death. What? A fucking ball? Really? And screaming helps my mental state. Oh my God, I used it again! Especially since if we die, we have to start from square one. So let's just say, after an unfathomable amount of time, shooting the enemies and dodging attacks and playing it as safe as humanly possible, I somehow managed to get this done. Take that bastard! Enemy spam piece of shit. Woo! Now with that done, it's finally time to kill the child responsible for all the enemy spam I have been dealing with. But first we have to witness her go through puberty. And let's just say, hormones are wild. Once we were actually able to move, we can witness her speed. Holy shit, that was fast! God damn! And destructive capabilities. She can move quite fast and has a few attacks that are quite hard to dodge. She has one attack where she can shoot shockwaves on the ground, and on the third shockwave, we can hit her weak point. But other than that, we have to react to all of her attacks to the best of our capability and use our supercharge to dwindle her health to her next phase. In this phase, due to her size increase, her attacks have a larger radius, which makes them no a little harder to dodge. Other than that, she has the same attacks from first phase, being able to do a ton of slam downs and being able to ski across the arena. Oh my god, she's skiing again! Stop! And one new attack where she can cause rocks to fall down ah! while she's glued to a wall. During the fight, I realized that every attack can be easily countered by dodging towards the child that's not really a child anymore's ass. What the, the only exception being Oh god, she's skiing again! Go! Go! The ski attack, which killed me a lot more times than I'd like to admit. Luckily for us, this boss fight has checkpoints just like the last one. So all we have to do is try our best to make it to the next phase before we can die and respawn at full health. The best way I found to do this was to use the crippling rod, get E-combos off, 
constantly shoot our revolver for tick damage, use the boomstick whenever it becomes ready, dodge the ski attacks as best as we can, and to always build up our supercharge so we can get her to our next phase. Now she's taking up half the fucking screen. With her body taking up half the fucking screen, her attacks become larger than life. Ah! What was I supposed to do there? And are a little bit different than her previous phases. First off, she can now drop huge rocks from the sky, which we can use as cover for her next attack, where she pelts us with rocks over and over again till she reveals her weak point. She can also jump up in the air, oh my god, no, 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 and do a wide range ground pound attack. She can burn the floor around her. She can do her shockwave attacks again. And lastly, she can literally blow up. And besides the fact that a lot of these attacks left little room for error, Bro, I can't move! I can't move! This was undoubtedly her easiest phase, since she did the same attacks in the same order every time. So once I died, all I had to do was remember what she already did. I should also mention, every time we reach the part where she blows herself up, we get to physically assault this child for extra damage in the form of emotional support on my behalf. Yeah! Yeah! Punch a child! So after doing this enough times, learning to dodge all of her attacks, and constantly shooting her with the revolver for tick damage, we did it. Beat the fucking child! Yes! I did it! For killing Velicity, we get the achievement Ancient Blood, and for doing the entire thing without our health dispenser, which wasn't that difficult since we respawn at the same phase we died at, and all we had to do was make sure we don't accidentally click a button the entire fight, we get the achievement, Best the Beast. And because this is the end of the game, we also get all the difficulty related achievements, and get to hear the most beautiful song ever during the rolling credits. I mean this. Such a beautiful world, but it drives us all. This hits hard. Back onto the main topic, we're not done with the game just yet, since we still have four more achievements left to get, which we'll need to get on New Game Plus. For this playthrough, we need to go through practically the entire game again, including all the tough parts that we had to go through on our first playthrough. And this also includes collecting every single collectible, Again. In collecting all the collectibles, again, we can have enough cash to max out all of our weapons and get the achievement, Boys and Toys. Along the way, we can also grab the achievement, Pew Pew Die, for killing 30 enemies with the electrically augmented weapons. This includes 30 enemies with the blaster, 30 enemies with the railgun, 30 enemies with the amp bolts, 30 with the boom eternal, 30 with the Death Ray, and 30 with the Lightning Tornado. Now the last two achievements are boss-specific ones. We need to kill the Parasiter without popping the egg sacs, and we need to kill our father within six minutes or less. The Parasiter wasn't too much of a challenge, since our character at this point was at a higher level than what evil mode enemies could dish out. So although there was chaos on the screen throughout the entire battle, we were just barely able to outmaneuver all the enemies and have enough health to survive the battle, which then gave us the achievement. There you go. Did I do it? Bio-friendly. Woo! We got it. Now for the last achievement left, we have to kill our father within six minutes or less. And even though this is on evil difficulty, this wasn't that hard. That is, if you know how to dodge his attacks and can dish out a shit ton of damage in a short period of time. At this point in the game, my character was level 29, which meant I had nearly every single perk upgrade and can do enough damage to kill the boss within 6 minutes. However, if we fail, like I did on my first try where I got around 7 minutes because I died a few too many times and I used my supercharge a little bit too early, we have to start the whole chapter all over again. Yes, that means going through all the enemy encounters again, and going through this stupid puzzle section again. And before you ask, no we can't quit the game, because if we do, it sends us straight back to the start. Are you kidding me? I have to do all of this again? Where we have to, you know, do everything again.
Luckily for us, on my third attempt, I managed to dodge my way through the boss and do enough damage in a short enough time where I managed to get the last achievement needed. Yes! I got it! I got it! I got it! I got it! Woo! We did it! We did it! 100% done. And now with that done, you should subscribe and maybe even join my Discord so you know when I live stream these challenge runs that I do on this YouTube channel. Anyways, we got 100%, so bye-bye.